So you might want to introduce yourself, Mike, uh, to the crowd and say hello while I get this set up. And we'll go ahead and proceed with it. Okay. Okay, well, hey, thanks, Todd. Um, like Todd said, I'm Mike Chevalier. I've been a technical marketing engineer at Intel for almost 30 years. Uh, but I've been in storage and virtualization for about the 10 years. And I've uh, had a relationship working with OpenE for the last eight years since I've been working on storage. And it's a privilege to be here because OpenE is a great company to work with. Um, what I do is I work in what's called ESA, and in ESA at Intel, we uh, work with third-party ISVs like OpenE to come up with essentially a recipe that shows uh, that you can download from our website that allows you, uh, essentially, we work, OpenE defines the uh, steps and instructions of how to load the software on top of our servers, and then we validate those servers to make sure that they're tested and uh, working so that when you download the recipe and install it, you know that uh, you have a uh, tested platform and software solution. Uh, Todd, I can't see the foil, so I don't know if Hold they're on, not let sharing me see it what's or. What's going on? Thanks. Let me find out what's happening here. Um, Reshrink it. Times that. Find out. Like there's a delay. One second, everybody. See if that comes up again. Yeah, so I can see it on my screen now. Um, let me adjust something. Yep, there it goes. For some reason, it's just give me a second. There we go. Okay, sorry about that, Mike. Thanks for letting me know. Can you see oh, that okay, now, there Mike? we go. Okay, great. Yes, I can. Thank you very much. Okay, so. Uh, for a lot of you, uh, launched our uh, new server-based products, um, based uh, essentially our Romley platforms earlier this year, and we've uh, essentially have a we've come out with a array of server solutions to meet different needs in the storage market. Um, the first part is just general servers that have a lot of storage. So we have uh, essentially, if you're producing an entry storage server for direct attached storage where you have the storage uh, on the server itself and you're not necessarily connected up to an external array, uh, that's a popular option for small and medium-sized businesses. We also uh, build a, a variety of uh, different uh, form factors. So we have 1U, 2U servers, as well as uh, you can, once you you know load a storage solution like OpenE on our products, we also have uh, test out external storage enclosures that you can connect up to our RAID controllers if you need to provide a scalable, expandable storage solution that hooks up to external JBODs. Um, so for the majority of our customers, or a lot of customers, uh, use OpenE for a SAN or NAS solution where you have a scalable storage solution where you can, you know, expand uh, to meet whatever the needs of your storage. And, you know, for scalable storage, you, you know, for high-performance computing or virtualization markets, uh, we have servers to meet those needs. As part of the uh, solution that we come out with, we have... Uh, essentially uh, Intel rate cards that we sell, uh, as well as plug-in I.O. modules so that you uh, preserve your I.O. slots and you don't have to really use them up for a rate controller. We have these plug-in I.O. modules for adding rate controllers or adding uh, external networking such as 10 gig E, uh, which is critical in uh, storage solutions as well. And then we have a uh, modular, so yes. I uh, didn't mean to interrupt you. Um... The I got one uh, a couple of people asking if you could just move the mic a little bit uh, away. We're getting some pop Closer. Keep, keep, keep that okay, way. how's that? Uh, Is that better? One more. Okay, how's that? That's better. Great. Is that anybody else okay. have a problem? Let us know. Thanks, Mike. I think you left off with the 10 gig uh, module, which we're probably going to go into. But uh, <clears throat> go ahead, buddy. Okay, no problem. Um, yeah, if I start breaking up, let me know. Uh, but anyway, um, yeah, so we also have uh, a solution for what's called the Intel Modular Server. The nice thing about this is we go into a lot of uh, uh, educational markets as well as uh, hospitals where you have a remote branch solution or remote branch offices where you need everything integrated. And we have a, a SAN array that's uh, local on disks. Then we have up to six server modules and network built into the box. And we use OpenE as a solution that you can load up on one of these servers and essentially turn to that internal storage array to an external uh, iSCSI target that you can connect up and back up those uh, 
any type of uh, servers that you have on the box or if you have uh, VMs loaded as well. So that's a popular solution for remote branch and we, like I say, we use OpenE for that storage solution in that space. So next foil. Sure. Uh, one said the voice is still a little loud and clipped. Probably um, we'll get to the next screen. Let's see. Maybe turn on the speaker a little bit. Maybe that'll work. And to, uh, to actually turn down the microphone. See if that works a little bit. Okay. Thanks yeah, let's go ahead and do that. Um, is this like better? Another person said the voice is still a little ch loud and choppy. Um, they're saying it's a little bit better now when you said okay. So we'll just keep working. Is that better? Soon. Sometimes what happens is the packets are getting crazy on our full fire edge. Go ahead, Mike. Is that better? Or... Yeah, I think it's better. Okay, I turned down both uh, both the speaker as well as the microphone. Okay, so... Uh, like I said, we launched a series of uh, Romley motherboards and platforms uh, early this year. Uh, the three main ones that we targeted for uh, the storage segment is Canoe Pass, Grizzly Pass, and Iron Pass, and I'll explain what those capabilities are. But when you look at our uh, storage solutions in general, uh, we uh, target for high quality so that uh, when you buy the servers, we do a lot of testing internally, both at Intel and OpenE to test out our storage solutions as well as our recipes. Uh, we also have, uh, with the new product, a lot uh, better I.O. Uh, in general. So we've seen uh, performance boosts in for people deploying storage solutions with our new Romley products. And the other thing that we've added for uh, our Romley servers is a uh, longer life. So you can actually get Traditionally, our warranty has been three years, but you can actually extend that to five. So uh, for storage solutions, that's pretty critical. Some of these storage arrays will sit in your data center for quite a long time. No, that's, um, that's, that's but the three... Uh, Mike? Yeah. I didn't mean to interrupt you. Um, there was one question you said for five years. Uh, you say that's for, they're asking if it's for the Iron Pass as well, or, or just for the Grizzly, or for all the three products on that's coming into the new storage, uh, what Intel's new storage is are. Yeah, it's for all three uh, motherboards that I'm showing here, as well as to all Romley products um, available through the channel and Intel. Um, okay, great. So, yeah, at, at purchase, you can buy the uh, five-year warranty. Okay, so the uh, three servers that we got is uh, Canoe Pass. This is more of our mainstream platform, and if you used uh, Intel platforms in the past, this is kind of, kind of like an Urbana equivalent, uh, but it supports the uh, E5, E5 2600 uh, Xeon processors, and, you know, th that provides a lot of capability and performance uh, on our servers. Uh, we also had... Uh, ...support for up to 60, but you, you can actually go with the Grizzly Pass. Uh, but the other uh, nice thing is more for, our, for storage purposes, it has 48 uh, Gen uh, PCIe I.O. lanes uh, for storage solutions. Um, but if you need more uh, I.O. capability, you would go uh, with a Grizzly Pass or an Iron Pass. So as you look from left to right, as far as uh, performance is concerned and capabilities, uh, as you go to a Grizzly Pass and an Iron Pass, you get more capability, either uh, expanded memory or expanded I.O. Um, so the Grizzly Pass is uh, the primary platform that uh, we're working with OpenE to deliver a storage solution for, and it essentially has a lot of memory capability. Um, it fits in a, we have a, also one U and two U chassis, but primarily I'm going to talk about the two U chassis solution today. Uh, but it's our, uh, you know, technology showcase board and one of the primary boards that we think will do well in the, uh, storage market. Uh, but this, uh, product has up to 24 DIMMs, so you can maximize it. It's good for, uh, um, storage solutions, but it's also good for virtualization. One of the nice things about if you use a Grizzly Pass, you know, two U, uh, solution for storage. You can also use the same server for virtualization where you need a higher memory footprint. So that way you have one server that you service as opposed to having two different separate uh, solutions for both storage and virtualization. So that's certainly an option. Um, Mike, as far as IO capability, yeah, go ahead. Sorry, um, sometimes <clears throat> there's questions that come up. But one question is on the memory. Uh, you've got uh, 24 DIMMs in there. Now, what's the largest, and of course they're going in pairs, um, what is the largest size or what, what can you, what's the fully po fully populated amount that you could use for memory on the Grizzly Pass? So oh, gosh, I don't know my... Uh, 
Oh no, it's more than that. So, I mean, if you use eight gig dims, that's, uh, let's see, <laughs> I gotta multiply it out in the top right, of my right, head. Right, right, right. Uh, yeah, yeah, so the, uh, uh, we also have on a thaw as new memory comes out of higher density. Uh, we also support, uh, I think 16 gig as well. But as, uh, memory comes out, we put on our thaw exactly what memory is supported. Um, so anyway, I, I don't think it's indicated here. I think it's indicated on the foils going forward, so I'll point that out okay. when we get to it. Thank you. I'm just not good at math on the fly. No, 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 don't worry about <laughs> um, it. Yeah. Go ahead. You're good. That's it. Yeah. Oh, okay, good. And then uh, with Iron Pass, uh, this is a, a board that has maximum I.O. support. So uh, it's used in two different cases, one where you have, you know, you have uh, – storage enclosures where you need a lot of uh, plug-in cards like SAS expanders or uh, 10 gig E cards, or if you hook up to multiple different types of networks. Um, but it also uh, uh, has uh, memory as well, but only 16 DIMMs compared to the 24 DIMMs for Grizzly Pass. And this one has uh, up to 80 PCIe Gen 3 or Gen 4 uh, and four Gen uh, PCIe Gen 2 lanes. So you get uh, maximum I.O. performance in that configuration. So next slide. Yeah, this motherboard yeah, looks uh, the, pausing a little bit. This is the, uh, the first one on the left, the Canoe Pass. Yeah, so uh, the Canoe, Canoe Pass is, like I say, more of a, a gen generic um, motherboard targeted for the mainstream and a lot of small and medium-sized businesses. But we have uh, support for the dual Xeon E5 2600 uh, with the Sandy Bridge uh, CPU. And... There's some other additional features that we support on this that are interesting for storage, uh, but also for virtualization. So I'll point that out. One is TXT. Uh, for those of you that uh, don't under, have it uh, familiar with TXT, what it allows you to do is to check the, uh, it does a measurement of the BIOS and firmware as you boot and uh, make sure that there's no modifications to that so that if somebody tries to come in and hack and load a rootkit, for example, it would prevent, uh, you know, the system from, it would see that. And when it does the measurement, then you can prevent it from, uh, you know, booting, for example. Uh, the other thing it has is it has an eUSB e connector uh, for hooking up a USB. So, for example, with OpenE or uh, more other storage appliances or if you run any appliance software, you can load that onto a USB and plug it internally into the board. Um, we also have uh, up to eight SAS or SATA ports uh, via two uh, SATA uh, 3 gig and 4 gig, I mean, sorry, 4 SATA, Three gig ports through the Pattsburgh chipset. But for most, for most storage solutions that you can deliver with an OpenE, you're going to use a hardware RAID controller, uh, better for performance as well as, uh, you know, when something happens on the board, we have log files with the RAID controller to allow you to go in and debug what the issue is. With software RAID, you don't necessarily have that capability. And then for IO, we have up to six, uh, electrical, up to two double width, uh, card configurations, depending on what you want to set up. Um, we also have a slot Right, six riser, uh, and in addition to that, we have a plug-in card for a six gig eight port SAS uh, rock module. So on our motherboards, uh, we have uh, I/O slots, but we also have the ability to plug in an I/O module, so that you don't have to necessarily use up a PI, PCI slot for a RAID controller. You can actually just plug in the I/O module, and we also have I/O modules for uh, hooking up to uh, ten gig uh, Ethernet that you can plug into the motherboard as well. Uh, in addition to that, for server management, we have what we call our RMM4 modules so that you can manage the uh, motherboard and the system uh, on a management network on a separate NIC, for example. So you plug in the NIC and you connect up to your management network, and that would be independent of your uh, storage network, for example. Uh, in addition to that, uh, with this board, we have integrated dual or quad-core uh, gigabit Ethernet, depending on which uh, motherboard you uh, uh, tend to order. And then, of course, uh, we have up to uh, 16 uh, DIMMs for up to uh, 1,600 mega transactions per second um, as far as memory bandwidth. So we have uh, really high performance uh, memory capability with the uh, Sandy Bridge and Romley platforms. Okay, so next foil. Now, this is the one we're currently certifying, everyone, <clears throat> the Grizzly Pass when I first was the system. And I popped the hood on it. Um, it was well endowed for sure. I mean, the memory socks, they filled it all up. Um, the, it's 
basically, if you look at where number one and two is, and I'll let Mike talk about this board, but we started testing it. And we did find a significant difference in, in performance. Um, but we, if you look at where one and two is here, or the, uh, it's like a riser card where you put the um, SATA cards or, or other PCI cards on that, but the, um, the design was very impressive. And additionally, we have it with the 10 gigabit, um, oh, the add-on NICs that are in there. And it comes with two of them. And I'll let Mike talk about that. But uh, I I'll, I'll probably get a photograph on this uh, top and bottom so everybody could see the ports and uh, see the system because we are going to be certifying it and we're going to be putting it on our website. So go ahead, Mike. It's just a very nice board. I was really impressed when we received it. Yeah, it's uh going to be one of our uh, best-selling boards, uh, both in virtualization and storage, uh, a lot because of the performance of the processors, but also because of the amount of memory capability that you have. And uh, we have really nice I.O. expansion. So from a, a storage standpoint, with this board, you get up to 24 DIMMs. Um, like I say, good for storage, good for uh, virtualization, where you need to max amount, uh, the amount of uh, memory per VM. Uh, we also have dual port, uh, I mean, dual Intel Xeon, E5 2600 Sandy Bridge CPUs that can plug into this processors to get maximum performance. And then uh, the other uh, thing I wanted to point out was uh, the storage I.O. module slot that's in the center of the board. That's where you can plug in that uh, RAID controller where you don't actually have to use up a PCI slot for your RAID card. You can actually just plug in a, a RAID module on the board itself and saving a slot. Uh, we also have TXT with this board as well uh, for the security. And then uh, the other part is that at the lower part of the board, you'll see the I.O. expansion module. This is where Todd said you can add things like a 10 gig e-board, a two port 10 gig e-board uh, port uh, module that you can expand uh, so you can have uh, 10 gig connected up to your storage network. Um, and once again, we have the RMM for a dedicated LAN. Uh, and then you have different I.O. slot options uh, for these uh, uh, boards, uh, riser card options, so you can add I.O. to expand it in a 2U two, two, chassis. And I'll talk about that when I get to the chassis itself. But this uh, target uh, platform is, uh, you know, providing uh, maximum memory capacity. It's uh, rack optimized for performance in either a 1U or 2U chassis. And it has ex very extensive I.O. flexibility as far as uh, building a configuration that would meet your storage needs. Let's go on to the hey, next one. Yeah. Mike, you got a question, two of them. Uh, one question is, uh, for the best performance, uh, is it better to go the 10 gigabit with the Iron Pass than the Grizzly, or are they the same? Yeah, I mean, the architectures are very similar, so you will see uh, similar performance either either way you go. Um, the big difference is, uh, oh, I'm sorry, with, with the, with the, uh, uh, Iron Pass, you do get have more PCIe lanes, so you will get maximum I/O performance in that case. In the case of the Grizzly Pass, you have more memory, so uh, depending on you know how you want to, uh, depending on which way you, you lean on performance um, for Grizzly Pass, it's it's memory, and for I/O, I mean Iron Pass is for I/O. Great, great, and of course I can answer the next question. Um, looks like so is Grizzly Pass will be certified with Open E and the 10 gigabit. 10 gigabit uh, NICs. Yes, they will be. Um, of course, we had to purchase a 10 gigabit switch, and that was expensive, but we need it anyway. And of course, when we do our testing, we similarly have to test the bonds. We have to test MPIO. Uh, we also test with uh, many, um, up to about four Windows 2008 servers. Uh, so we created an environment when we test these uh, systems, and we list them on our website, especially for the Intel servers. So we hope to have this finished, uh, the test, probably within the next three weeks, because they, they're very extensive. Go ahead, Mike. Okay, next foil. There you go. Okay, excellent. Uh, so the, the other board we offer, uh, you know, for storage is Iron Pass. So same CPU capability, you can add uh, two uh, E5 2600 processors. This also includes the eight, uh, the SAS Rock module, that's the plug-in RAID controller that you can add, also supports TXT. Uh, 
the thing about this card is this is more for, uh, you know, where you're mounting cards, uh, vertically or up and down, uh, where you can add up to eight single width cards. Uh, we also have support for anybody in high performance computing for four by 16 double width cards. So if you're plugging in a, uh, uh, a GPU, you can plug up to four in this, in this system. So it can be used for high performance computing op- options as well as storage. Uh, we also have the, I, Intel IO expansion module to add uh, 10 gig support, for example. And we also have the RMM module for doing remote management on the box as well. Um, so this one is really uh, targeted for uh, where you need uh, really maximum IO flexibility because uh, you have maximum number of slots plus uh, you have the ability to, uh, you know, you have uh, more PCIe lanes connected up to the storage so you should get uh, better performance as well. Uh, has a lot of flexibility on what uh, I.O. cards you can add, and we both have uh, both rack and pedestal options as well. And um, so you can pick between the two, uh, whether you're rack mounting it or whether you're just in a small or medium-sized business where you have a pedestal type option, uh, you have your choice of which one you want to pick. Okay, next one. These are which is the more on the writer. No, they're not the modules. So go ahead, Mike. You're good to go. Okay, great. Yeah, so uh, so the nice thing about the chassis that we're supporting compared to previous generations is that we uh, this is our 2U chassis called uh, Big Porn Peak that the Grizzly Pass would plug into. Uh, and you can see it actually installed here. But the idea is that um, we have a dual redundant power supplies on the back, uh, but the uh, critical thing for storage is that we have the hard drive options of depending on what you want to add. You can go from, uh, you know, eight uh, three and a half inch drives to 12 three and a half inch drives, uh, depending on which option you options you want. Or you can go eight, 16 or 24 two and a half inch drives. So you can maximize the amount of drive uh, space that you can plug into this chassis with either 12 three and a half inch drives or up to 24 two and a half inch uh, drives as well. So this, you know, allows for uh, a very nice storage enclosure that you can pick uh, whatever options you want to go with. Um, for riser cards, uh, we have a set of uh, different riser cards sub- that are supported. Uh, the first of which uh, allows you to plug in two full height, full length uh, by eight cards or one full height, half length card. So you get up to uh, three cards in a riser and you can pick and choose which ones you want to use uh, for the box. Um, and then riser two is option is uh, full height, full length by 16 or a double width board and one full height, half length board. So your choice of, like I say, if you're in this case, uh, you can plug in, uh, you know, like I say, if you're doing high performance computing, you could plug in some GPUs as well. And then finally, uh, for uh, more legacy stuff, uh, for the riser three, you have the option of two PCIX 133 and one full height, half length by eight PCIe Gen 3 board. Um, so there you have some flexibility as well. So here you can pick and choose depending on the boards that you're plugging in, whatever IO capability you want. And typically for a storage a box that you guys uh, typically buy, a 10 gig E uh, card can be added uh, as well. And then we also have the Intel IO expansion module on the board itself. So with that, we do have, uh, you know, plug-in cards for supporting uh, quad NICs or uh, if you want to add uh, 10 gig, we have a two port 10 gig option as well. And then, uh, you know, typical for to you, we have the typical front panel for showing uh, network IO, turning on power, ID lights, uh, things like that. But this is our, no, Mike, you know, typical standard chassis. Yes. No, I wanted to inject something here. You know, when I, these new line of servers, I've noticed one thing, especially with the Grizzly, when we first turned it on, it was really quiet. It wasn't uh, as noise. The acoustic sound, the noise level was very, very nice. Um, it's interesting when you hear the older servers, uh, but when I loaded up both of these, uh, it was very, very low noise. Very, It was very well done. So just there's something interesting. Yes. Is, I, you, know, you get. I, we talked to so many engineers that uh, when our engineers are talking to them, because we're used to talking so loud because they're in the server rooms or the data centers, and it's very hard to hear engineers when we were working with them. Um, this was quite enjoyable to know that it's there and having the same power. So um, interesting. I, I didn't know how you guys did it from your, your previous on the 
McKay Creeks in the previous version, but this, this was well designed. Yeah, based on feedback from customers on the previous generation uh, that in some cases were loud, uh, we worked a lot on the fan algorithms to, uh, to cool the system and, of course, the Sandy Bridge uh, processors because uh, they're, uh, you know, they're, they're much cooler and, and, and run better, so they, they can use uh, 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 lower fan speeds. The funny thing that when we started getting these servers, we actually had a hard time figuring out that they were actually turned on because before you could actually hear them. Now, in some cases, some of our servers are so quiet we actually think they're turned off. And so you all, you know, you'll have it turn, you know, you have the system off and you press the power button to turn it on. You realize that it's already on. <laughs> I will tell you, we've already done that. <laughs> we've we've actually go, <laughs> is it actually on? And we we don't know, and we're scared to touch, and we have to go up to the monitor to make sure. So. Yeah, it's very interesting yeah. how you guys kept it very low noise. Yeah, so it's a pre-warning to you guys to check to make sure that look at the power button to ensure that your server is on. <laughs> it might be on. <laughs> and yeah, uh, yeah, yeah we, we have it. Uh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Next foil. Yeah, I do all the time when I go to trade shows because I'll turn on a server and I think it's not on and. And then of course I'm rebooting and you don't necessarily want to do that when you're booting up a system if it takes, you know, some, several minutes to load an OS or. No. Well, the boot time was faster on this. Okay. Uh, okay, sure. The, uh, Intel RAID products. So we have a variety of, uh, Intel RAID products that we've, uh, developed for our platforms. Uh, so we have, uh, you know, for data protection options for RAID levels. We have a zero, one, five, and six, and then of course you can uh, span to ten, uh, rate ten, fifty, or sixty, and we we fully validate each uh, option to make sure that it's tested. So you can you know ensure that the quality of our products are are, are high, and uh, of course with OpenE they do a lot of extensive testing on their software to make sure that it works with our rate controllers as well, so that you know that you get a high quality product when you when it gets ships. Um, the other thing uh, that we've added with our, I mean, we haven't added, but the RAID Web Console uh, has a GUI that um, is built in that you can go Control G and access. But we've also added uh, some uh, a RAID Web Console that allows you to go in and set the uh, RAID uh, RAID uh, configurator as well. But typically with OpenE, you're going to go into the Control G and you know set it up before the BIOS boots, and then uh, you know set up your uh, RAID with with the OpenE software. Um, we do have been getting uh, We've done testing on our RAID controllers, and we get exceptional throughput in the IOPS um, that provides interesting leading performance. We have those benchmarks with the RAID co cards uh, actually published, but the performance is really high on these cards. Um, the other uh, thing that we've added is to take advantage of SSDs, which obviously in storage, because of the increased read and write performance, you can get some really high uh, performance out of these systems if you're using SSDs. But uh, a lot of people, you know, you can't afford to necessarily populate your 24 drive array with uh, 24 SSDs. So the second best option is to create an SSD cache that you can take advantage of uh, that improves your performance. Um, just by providing, you know, two or three RAID uh, SSD in your system, and they would act as a RAID cache. And I'll talk about a little bit about that as well. Uh, the other thing uh, that we uh, do is we do uh, document and support our products really well. Uh, but we also have advanced uh, warranty replacement that we've added. That you can get next day delivery of parts. And, of course, we've added the extended uh, warranty for up to five years uh, for these RAID controllers as well. And, you know, that's critical when you de deploy a storage box because um, when you're putting it in your data center, you, you want to be you, – you'll be using that storage array for a long time. So it's nice to know that you, both the motherboards as well as the uh, uh, array controllers are uh, supported up to five years. Okay, next next one. You should be good, Mike. Yeah, it's it's coming up slowly on. It's our Intel network. <laughs> yeah, wireless here uh, definitely tends to be be slow. <laughs> uh, I was worried about that that you actually wouldn't be able to pick up my voice, but um, okay. So for uh, RAID uh, for our RAID uh, solutions for our uh, storage solution, we provide you know reliable products. Uh, we also uh, have capability for data protection, which I'll talk in a in a second. 
very easy to use, and uh, the idea is to provide different levels of RAID depending on the performance that you need. So uh, for basic needs, we do have a software RAID option with our products that are uh, allow you to uh, set up a you know, SATA RAID 0, 1, and 10. But this is more for, you know, small and medium-sized business, not necessarily setting up for storage, but just want a basic server and basic RAID support. But for storage, um, you really want to move up to a hardware RAID controller solution, and that's what we use with OpenE. So we have uh, entry-level uh, uh, cost-effective hardware RAID that you can get. That's uh, hard RAID 0, 1, 10, or 1E. Um, and the nice thing about these is we have cards available. We also have plug-in modules that you can plug in. And it's our lowest cost hardware RAID solution for, like I say, a small business or a medium-sized business where they don't necessarily uh, need a, a, a maximum performance, but they're still setting up storage arrays in their office. But this is a nice solution for a lower cost. For more of the mainstream, uh, we do have uh, a full intelligent RAID with great performance. Uh, this allows you to support RAID 5, 6, 50, or 60. And there's, uh, we add uh, both uh, onboard cache and battery. And uh, we also have a premium uh, feature for SSD cache, which I'll talk to in a second. And these options are uh, enabled by different keys that you buy. I was going to show the key chart, but it's quite an eyesore when you look at it and trying to explain it would take more than 20 minutes. Um, it's really pretty basic. You, you buy uh, support for either SAS or RAID 5, but when you look at the chart, it gets confusing as to which RAID key you buy. So uh, anyway, right. I didn't want to present that today, but know that those options are available. Yes? Um, on the uh, mainstream where you have the onboard cache and the battery, that, that's a battery backup, and also how much cache is on that? Uh, the 512 is, is it, uh, a little bit more. Can, can you tell us a little bit about that? Oh, it, it depends on the board. And I, th I think the cache options, I've looked at the specific board, but I think it's like either 128 or uh, 256 meg. And I'd have to look at the chart for to see if it, there's anything higher. Okay. And, and the battery backup? Yeah, so the battery backup, uh, we do, are you just looking to whether we have it or? Right. Is a, so it, does it come with a battery backup? A yeah, it does. It does. It has a BBU option. Uh, one of the things that we've added that I don't know. I don't know the details about other than it's a. It's like a capacitive battery. So like the other batteries, uh, you know, they would. They have a shelf life of, uh, you know, that they would fail. So with this uh, kind of a capacitive backup uh, battery, it allows you to, you know, preserve your uh, cash when something happens. Um, but it's not. Uh, it, it. It just you know, charges up the capacitor and basically uh, provides your battery backup for however long you need. Um, but that's a better option than a battery because of, it lasts longer, um, obviously. Right. There's a, one last question. Is that part of the cash vault support somebody's asking? I'm not sure if that's the same. I'm not sure what you mean by but we'll talk about the cash yeah, uh, yeah. We'll options that you can cash. get with the RAID Go controller ahead, shortly. Okay, and then uh, for scalable performance, we do have an expander uh, card that if you want to go beyond eight drive, uh, it plugs into your system and connects up to your RAID card so that you can expand out to go, you know, 16 or 24 drives, depending on what you need. Um, so that option is available as well. Okay, so next foil. Okay, you should be up, coming up. There you go. Look it over to Intel yet? Yeah, okay, here we go. Um, yeah, so for our, uh, we have, uh, for our mainstream uh, and scalable performance SaaS products, we have what we call our feature keys to upgrade uh, different capabilities in the RAID controller itself. Uh, the first of which is our, we have uh, both SSD cache and fast path IO as well. So in the case of SSD cache, this is where you provide some SSDs as you're uh, frequently accessing information. It stores it in the cache, allowing you to uh, actually go uh, locally to the SSD rather than having to go out to a uh, 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 to the drive. So it provides a little bit bigger cache than you have uh, internally to the card, um, and so improves uh, performance when you when you add this capability. 
Uh, the other option is to accelerate SSDs. So if you're using SSDs in your in your solution and you want to deliver uh, fast performance, you can actually uh, go with FastPath I/O, where we directly connect the reads or writes directly to the uh, SSDs, kind of bypassing the RAID stack, so that you get uh, much better uh, read or write performance as you're or, uh, going out to uh, to your arrays. And you know that's a, a significant performance. Boost and you know, like I say, you'll get up to 150,000 I/O reads per second. Um, the other option uh, for uh, our rate cards is our drive encryption management. Uh, what it allows you to do is, if you're using uh, drive uh, drives that are, have encryption capability and you have to buy a specific drive, uh, we enable the authentication key management uh, for those uh, self-encrypting drives. And the nice thing about that is, if you do encrypt your data on your drives, if you get rid of them. A lot of the problems that you have in data centers is people get rid of drives and the data still remains on the drives. So this will prevent, in case by accident that you don't clear them out, that it actually is uh, encrypted so that those drives will not be compromised if you ship it or get rid of them and somebody happens to grab one and tries to get the data, it'll all be encrypted. Uh, the other thing uh, we've added for our drives is uh, we have a snapshot capability. Uh, so that, uh, let's say, for example, the usage model, it's not intended to be your backup solution by any means. That's what you use OpenE for. Um, but this allows you to do a snapshot. So if you're upgrading software, for example, on a server, and, you know, let's say uh, something goes wrong with this, uh, this server upgrade, you can actually go back to a, a previous version of the drive. And that's a nice way, uh, you know, in case you have any type of corruption or you get a virus or something, you can take the snapshot and recover it. Uh, as well, but like I say, it's not intended to be your uh, backup solution. That's typically for small businesses that just need some type of uh, capability to recover in case uh, they do do an upgrade and something fails. Okay, next foil. Okay, so for SSD cache, uh, this is a nice option, like I say, especially if you're hooking up to a, you know, a 24 drive, two and a half inch array, and you don't necessarily want to populate that fully with uh, SAS or SATA drives, um, I mean with SSD drives. Uh, you can add, you know, for example, like four, three or four SSDs into your array, and then you can take advantage of that by turning on the SSD cache, where it will use those SSDs as a uh, drive cache and then connect up to the rest of your array that would be SAS or SATA. And you get a performance boost uh, because of that, because you're making use of the SSD as a, a cache, essentially, and then uh, providing much, much better performance than going directly to the drive. Yeah, I okay, want to add question. something here. <clears throat> you know, sure. when we use SSDs, um, we use the Intel's uh, SSDs in the 320s, and we really did get some really great performance. Uh, what we want to warn everybody, and we're seeing this, and we've had a couple incidents uh, where they were only using one SSD. And uh, what you really want to do is have more than one, so you have some type of, um, you know, RAID 1 scenario uh, or RAID 10 when you configure it. Uh, because if you lose that SSD and something happens, you can have some issue there. Um, also, Intel makes some real good SSDs. Um, I think the 520 series is probably the better performer as well as the longer lasting um, lifetime as well. I think, but you pay a little bit more, but it's worth it at the end. Okay, next flow. I think that's it, Mike. Oh, that's it. Okay. Well, I'd like yep, to thank everybody for, for uh, a terrible. <laughs> <laughs> so, if anybody has so any Mike, questions, feel free to you answer. Much. I mean, you've, um, you've definitely educated everybody on this, and, and there's a lot here. Um, and once again, everybody, we are, are going to be certifying the um, the Grizzly Pass, the Intel uh, server that we have right now, and where you'll find it located in the Partners section, certified by OpenE. Then you'll go right down to Intel. And when we sort of, you could see that we have several PDFs. Here you can see we did the Timber Creek uh, uh, for both their versions, the performance server, the PDF. We have this well documented. And it's a very lengthy documentation that we have that uh, I'm scrolling real fast, everybody, but we show uh, how we tested it, 
types of servers, um, the performance values with bonding, uh, um, and, and with NICs, so you know exactly what you're getting. We've seen some really, if you look at them, the performance values are really well done, uh, especially we recommend a lot to our customers on these X520s right here. Uh, we see little issues with them. That's hardly anything. Uh, and I didn't, the customers really enjoy it. So with that, uh, um, Mike, I really want to thank you for the time to, to talk to our audience and to talk to the people who uh, entrust our video and Intel uh, it's great performance and stability with their servers. And thank you very much, Mike, for showing us uh, the new product lines that are coming into play. Okay, well, hey, thanks for having me, Tom. Anytime. Thank you, everybody, and we'll see you in two weeks. Take care.